Okay, so this is part three of the tutorial, and what we're going to do is actually animate the digger arm by using a simple interface for a number of sliders to control the actual boom and forearm, and also the actual bucket of the digger arm um, using these sliders here. So we're going to be making a small GUI with these sliders on here to actually control this animation, and we're going to be using our previous models that were sent to us by the kind subscriber and also we've pulled this into this, an assembly from the previous videos um, the links to those are actually in the notes so you can look back at those and this one is actually creating some code to actually create this window sliders and to control this animation if you like this video please hit a like and also subscribe to the channel I also have a Ko-Fi site where you can actually donate to my contributions to the community and that's at ko-fi.com slash mang0 For the GUI interface I'm going to be using the PYQT also pronounced QT GUI widget toolkit Now this comes with Python and it's in the Py side and it's also it's been wrapped into FreeCAD because FreeCAD itself is actually programmed using the QT as the framework to drive its interface. Now this website tutorialspoint.com has a brilliant QT resource for Python and in there you'll be able to learn all about the different widgets, dialog boxes, sliders, layout management etc. So that's the site we'll be using this as a reference. I must make a start. Okay, so I've placed the macro on the screen so you can see what goes on, but I've rammed out a number of code lines there because we're going to take this step by step. Um, I don't want to go too in depth in this because there's going to be some videos on my channel soon regarding how to create menu systems or widgets to control animation. And they'll go into the actual language uh, in a bit more depth so you can actually follow those to actually code along. So the first thing is we import the Qt GUI framework from PySide, which is here. And I've imported everything from the Qt GUI there. The reason being is because I want to use the Q widget in there. And also later I'm going to be pulling in layouts and sliders. So we need this import. Now this part here is a class and this class what that allows it to do is we can extend the Q widget now when we extend the Q widget we get all the methods and properties from the Q widget across and we can actually use those in our class and though they won't show here they are actually part of the Q widget now all classes have a constructor and that's what I've defined here which will run each time the class is instantiated and our instantiation is down here so I've created a variable with my window which allows it to be instantiated so as you can see this class called my window which is assigned it to that variable so when it's instantiated it runs this init method with self and it's also running another initialized method on super which is the parent which is q widget we pass in my window and comma self there and that's just priming the class with all those methods and properties now this part here is self dot set window title animation control now set window title actually is this in q widget but because we've inherited it we can actually use self dot set window title and also we've got another one in here called self dot set window flags and that allows the windows to stay on top because we're using the qt dot windows stay on top hint we actually set a flag for that window to actually falsely make it stay on top of every other window that's there and that's important because when we hit play what will happen is that when we swap between our scene and our macro it'll actually stay on top so self.show actually shows the window as you just saw then when I hit play 
and that's also called the master method on Q widget. So that actually creates a window and you can see the title's been set and the actual style top's been set. So from there we actually need some sliders to actually place on that window. So we've got self.srd boom which is a slider for the boom and that's just variable that's been made up. We set that to Q slider and we're using QT dot horizontal in there. So we actually created a slider from our QT GUI that's been imported and we're passing in QD dot horizontal. So this will be a horizontal slider. We've actually also set the maximum and minimum of this. Now, if we look at what's been set, we see red res in circle. It should look familiar if you're familiar with the actual mass of the circle and that's radians. So that's how many radians are in a circle. And we use that and times it by a thousand. Now the reason why we times it by a thousand is to actually allow for the Q slider to be set minimum and maximum. Because the Q slider uses whole numbers, it can't use fractions, we have to actually set that and that will be converted back later. So we've got the self dot slider boom dot set minimum and we used a minus value in there of Radisson circle for time thousand, so minus six two eight three, six thousand two hundred eighty three, and then we set the maximum to a plus value. So we're going from minus six two eight three to plus six two eight three, and we actually set the main value, the current value, to zero. Now at the moment, if I run this, what will happen? You won't see it on screen because we have actually set a layout at the moment. So this line here. We're actually defining the layout and actually adding this slider boom, this slider to the layout with the add widget. Layout is just a variable and we just added it in there. And that's a QV box layout. And there's different layouts and you can see those over at the QT learning resource. And there you can see the different types of layouts we have there. So we've added a widget to the layout and the widget we're adding is our slider and then we go self.show. So what we need to do now is actually set the layout because if we run this, there is no layout in there. So there's another line which has disappeared in here, self.setLayout and pass in the layout. So the layout's been appended to it along with the slider and you can see the, the value is actually at zero. And this will go into minus 6283 and plus 6283. Now it's done that, we have to actually capture the event that the slider is actually emitting when we actually change the value and deal with that there. To do that we need an actual method. If we come down here, we've got a method down here. And this is just defining a slider boom move method self and there's some values that have been placed in here. And what I'm going to do is just run these out for the time being because we don't need these. So we'll get to that in a moment. Now to actually connect this method up to our value changed event, which this will be raising when we actually move the slider, we need the code self sld boom which is our slider and we're hooking into the value change method in there we can connect that up to our method here so that will mean that on the event value changed this method will be run now if we come down here and actually look at the contents so if I un comment the contents you can see the code here, what we've got. So we've got a value that we actually collect from from the actual slider boom, which is collecting the value. So we've got the value there. These two lines actually control the objects on screen themselves. So what I need to do is bring up our scene. So 
So let's have a look at some of these parts in here. So if we look at the CAD digram here, come down here, you must roll over it. If you gaze down to the bottom left, you'll see an internal name. And that internal name matches this name here. So we're using app.activedocument.getObject, the name dot placement dot rotation dot angle so we're changing the angle of it equals the value which is the value of our slider and then remembering that we've times this by a thousand we actually divided it by a thousand to actually get around the fraction issue with sliders now after that there is another command and what this is is the app dot solve a command which needs an import so come up here and import the ap2 underscore solver system as ATP, ATP underscore solver. So we're just aliasing this up. So we've actually renamed this. So we can actually use this name instead of this longer one down here. And what this does is just solve all the constraints in our document. It's the same as running the on the assembly workbench, the A2 plus workbench. Jump over to that. It's the same as running the Rubik's Cube here to solve constraints. So let's give that a go. So if I run this, we've got the actual animation controller there. Jump to assembly. If I start moving this now, you'll see that our digger arm it started to pivot around the boom. So we're actually pivoting around this point here. We're changing the angle from minus 360 to plus 360. So it's two rotations. And you see why we've done that in a minute. I mean, we can restrict the amount of rotation, but this gives us some leeway to actually adjust the different parts. So what I'm gonna do now is do the same for this part here, the forearm and the bucket. So to do that, there's many ways, but keep it simple, we're gonna duplicate these up. We could actually write a method to actually pass, because they're more or less the same values that we're passing in. We could write a method to do that, but we're just gonna keep it simple and just duplicate those up. So I've now duplicated that up, so we're actually controlling as well as the boom controlling the forearm which is this one here what we're going to do is just go full screen on this there we go and I'm going to get rid of the Python console because we no need, no longer need that and it gives us more space to actually look at the code so we don't need this import here so I no longer need that because I was used for something else right so what I've done is created a duplication of code for the forearm and just renamed it to slider forearm which is duplicated from here so you can see they're virtually it's all the same except for that we changed the name we're using a different variable name and also we're passing in a different method and the method is a duplication of the slider boom moved but we're using a different name for the object so we're using the forearm name. So you glance your eyes down to the bottom left. You can see the actual internal name there. That's been placed in there. If we run that, you can see that if I move it, we can now move the boom and the actual forearm. We'll do the same for the bucket. So you now can see that we've added the bucket in there. So we've got the bucket, which again is duplication with name changes and also the value change. Remember that we added the, to the layout as well. So the forearms added and the buckets added. And then we come down here and you see the slider bucket moved. Again, the same code, but this time with the CAD digger arm bucket internal name which is down the bottom left there so we'll run that 
jump over to our assembly, we can now actually move this. So we've got control over all parts of the actual digger arm. So that's a way of controlling a model via a GUI. And we can do this with placement, angle, position, etc. So we can actually rotate this on different planes if we so wish. Uh, yeah, I've got more videos on my channel coming up regarding the actual GUIs themselves and how to actually control animation via GUIs. And they'll be coming up very shortly on the channel. So I hope you enjoy this and I'll see you again soon. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video and please look out for some more. And I'd just like to thank my current donators who have donated via our Ko-Fi site. I hope to see you again and bye for now. Stay safe.